Hey, I'm Monica, and I'm here to help you get started with Starburst Galaxy. Some of the powers of Starburst Galaxy is that it lets you discover, locate, govern, and query your data from multiple different sources, whether that be a relational database management system, an object storage location, or a NoSQL database. What I want to do in this tutorial is give an example of those federation capabilities and do all the other things we listed, such as some discovery, some governance, and then some interactive analytics so we can look at that data, inspect that data, and do some analysis on it. The premise of this tutorial is that we want to combine data from the COVID-19 data lake with the TCPH data set to create one final output. Our end goal here is that we want to find the total case count by region, so keep that in mind as we work through the tutorial. All of the information for this tutorial is available in the Starburst doc site, so please refer there for any of the SQL queries or any of the other information that you'll need to get through it. If you have any questions when you're working through this tutorial, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help. So let's get started. I've just locked into Starburst Galaxy, and the first thing I'm going to do is navigate into the Catalogs tab. That's going to let me create the catalog connection to our COVID-19 data source. You can see above we have some of the data source connections available to us. We're going to scroll down and select the COVID-19 data lake, and then we're going to put in the catalog name, description, and the information we need to connect that catalog. Then we're just going to set the account admin permissions. We're going to save those access controls so that we're able to access the data we need for this tutorial. The next thing we want to do is add the catalog we just created to the sample cluster that's already provided for us. So this is the one deviation from the tutorial. The tutorial on the Starburst Docs page does create its own cluster. Here we're just going to be adding the catalog we created to the sample cluster that was already provided for us. The cluster is updating because we need, need to add that new catalog towards it. So once that's done, we can go ahead and, and jump in and query. So the cluster is all up and running and now we can navigate back to the query editor. And the first thing we want to do is run Schema Discovery. Schema Discovery is a feature in Starburst Galaxy that lets you analyze a root object in an object storage location, and then you'll get back all of the structure information for any of the tables found. So we're going to navigate to our um, AWS COVID catalog. We're going to click on those three right dots, and then we're going to run Schema Discovery. So put in the URI for the COVID-19 data lake, and then hit that Run Discovery button. So you see we got some SQL back. That's awesome. We're going to hit Save SQL, which is going to pop it into a new tab. And we'll um, revisit that later. Essentially, we've got all of the SQL we need to then go create that table if we wanted to. We're going to follow the tutorial steps because we want the schema to have a different name. Um, but if you wanted to, you could run it there and change all of the tutorial schema names. So let's go ahead and now pop into the roles and privileges section in Starburst Galaxy. Basically, we have a bunch of different, you know, roles and privileges that you can utilize to customize your system for what makes most sense for you. Here we're going to add a location privilege. So we're going to navigate to the privileges tab and then we're going to click add privilege. And what we want to do is hit that location button and then put the um, S3 location for the COVID-19 data lake. That's going to let us query it and create any SQL we need. So now that we have that privilege added, we'll pop into this screen, which just kind of shows you all of the customizations that you can do for the granularity that you want based off, you know, account, clusters, catalogs, locations, and functions. There's lots of flexibility to customize the access control to your needs. So now I want to pop back into the query editor, and what I want to do is um, go to a new tab, and the first thing I want to do is go over on the right-hand side and select my catalog. 
Then I'm going to copy over the create schema statement and run that statement so that I'm able to put the table that we're going to create in that schema. This matters because all of the queries that are written have a specific schema and a specific table name. So then I'm going to select my schema once it's been created. And next, I'm going to create my table. So this would be the creation of the COVID-19 table that we're going to use for that information. So I'm going to run that query and get that data from the table. Now I just want to do a simple select and make sure that everything loaded correctly. Here you can see we have all of the data that we want. It looks normal. We, we can proceed forward, basically, the, just the double logic check that we're good to go. So the next thing I want to do is actually just kind of run a basic information select statement only based off of, you know, like the information we'll need for our final output. So I'm just going to run that, kind of get the lay of the land. Here you can see we have multiple last update statements or uh, last update timestamps. Um, so that could be confusing. We should probably investigate which one is pertinent information for us and which one is not as important. So let's go ahead and run a query to investigate that. Let's select one specific FIPS and let's just look at that FIPS code and see what last update comes up. Okay, so we see a last update timestamp that is May 30th. Um, we can hopefully see that, you know, there are actual updates happening to each row. So we can't just aggregate the data. That's what this is telling us is we'll have to only pull the last update timestamp for each of our FIPS codes. So one way to do that is to select the max last update timestamp from the table and then pull all of the FIPS codes that make sense or that would equal to, you know, that timestamp. So let's go ahead and just run a query to validate that the last update timestamp I put in my query works. So just making sure that the query runs, okay, we get a record back, great. Now let's go ahead and remove the FIPS code and actually put in the last update timestamp that is the max last update. So here we should expect to get back multiple different FIPS and the final confirmed cases, and we do, so that's a good sign. But what do we do if that last update timestamp isn't equal to that value? Let's just validate that, you know, we don't have any other timestamps that don't match that last one. So what I'm going to do, I picked Utah. I'm going to basically query and try and find if there's anything that doesn't equal that last timestamp but is the last value. So you can see here, we've got a lot of FIPS back. <laughs> so we're gonna need to investigate further um, and we need to figure out a way to get that most recent update, even if it doesn't equal that last timestamp. Um, so we can see here that the specific, you know, Cache Utah, the last update there was April 16th. So we're gonna need to you know, figure out another way. And, and actually what we're going to do is utilize a window function. So we're going to essentially create a most recent timestamp for each FIPS code and then compare it to the last update code. So let's just create that most recent timestamp, you know, column right now for all of our values. Yep, we can see we now have two columns and that they'll be compared side by side. The next query that we want to run is we want to make sure that we can um, actually, you know, evaluate the last update timestamp equals the most recent timestamp. So we're only pulling back the, the last timestamp that for each FIPS code makes sense. So we'll pull, pull back the 416 for Cash Utah, but, you know, for others, we'll pull back that 530 date. So let's go ahead and run that query. 
And now we can see that we've got data that, that makes sense. If you want to do a deep dive, you should be able to find some, you know, that timestamp is not necessarily just 530. It is also, you know, multiple different timestamps, but it correlates to the FIPS code. That makes sense. So we've done our analysis on the COVID-19 data. We've kind of understood it enough, done the interactive analytics. Now we can jump over to the TCPH data set and give that a look. So the first thing I want to do is just run some basic select statements on the two tables we'll be utilizing. We'll be using the nation table and the region table just to get some familiarity. So run those select statements, and, and you'll be able to see that the region key in the region table actually acts as a foreign key in the nation table. Once we've got our familiarity down, let's, let's start actually aggregating our data sources. So this is where we get to do, you know, sort of the meat and the potatoes of the work and actually see the magic happening. So let's go ahead and run a query to basically add the COVID-19 data with the nation information in um, the TCPH data set. So we're going to run that query, and we'll see that we're off to a good start. However, we only have 24 of the 25 designated countries in the nation table that are returning. Um, let's run a distinct query to identify which country is missing and why and see if we can fix it. So here we can see that the United States is assigned a country region value of US in the Enigma data, but in the nation data, it's United States. So we're going to have to fix that you know, difference between the two and so that we can join the data properly. So let's go ahead and address that. Let's run this query to actually join all of the data together, replace the nation name as necessary. Okay, we'll see that the data coming back actually makes sense. And now we wanna add another inner join so that we can get the region information on each record. So we can see we have all of the information here. We, we've done a lot of joining together, but I think we've got the good bones to finally answer the question from the business. So let's put all of the puzzle pieces together and fulfill that initial ask of the aggregation of the confirmed case count by region. So we're going to use all of the you know, brain power and smarts we did on our COVID-19 interactive analytics query earlier, combine that with what we've just figured out from the nation and the region table, and we're going to run this final list statement. So now we can see we get back five different regions, all with a confirmed total case count using the sum aggregation. And we can do that aggregation because we already figured out the last update time is equal to the most recent time, as opposed to just that bare minimum last update time. So now that you've gotten your feet wet with Starverse Galaxy, I hope you've explored some of the Federation capabilities and gotten to see some of the really cool you know, power that we have within it. Um, I hope you keep exploring, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.